Hi, I'm Jeff. This is a training course about NumPy. It is part of DataBeans data science training courses, and this is the third unit. We're going to learn the universal functions in NumPy, or UFunc for short. The universal function has different definition in other places. In NumPy, universal functions are those operates on ND arrays in element by element fashion, supporting array broadcasting, typecasting, and several other standard features. We can refer to NumPy's user guide for more information about UFunc. Today we begin our notebook with NumPy and matplotlib import. You're going to see why later. Then I create an ND array of 100 elements using link space. Those elements are values distributed evenly between minus 10 and 10. You may already notice there is one issue here. Link space function include the stop value 10. Having 100 elements make the array missing the data point at 0, 0.0. Having 101 elements make the array look better. But the data point 0.0, .0 will later on cause issues with logarithm function, which I try to avoid. The first universal function we are going to talk about is the absolute function. It spells as ABS in NumPy, same as the Python's building function. In fact, many of the U functions look the same as Python's building functions or those from the math package. Now let's apply NumPy absolute function upon array A and check the result. You can see the function went through each element in A and returned the absolute values in the form of a new ND array. And if you want, you can count the number of elements in the returned array and see we got exactly 100 elements here. That's what we call element by element fraction. There is a better way to understand the relationship between input array and the output array. We can plot them using matplotlib. We've already imported matplotlib's plot object. But to make our life even easier and promote dry principle, we are going to create two functions for that purpose. To understand more about the dry principle, which stands for don't repeat yourself, please just Google it. Matplotlib is not our focus at this stage. I'll just quickly explain what these two functions do for us. The first one take input array, the result ND array of U found upon the input array, and a label for that function, and plot a bar chart kind of things to display the relationship between the input array and the output array. The second function takes similar parameters but double the result and the label, so that we can compare two different functions within one plot. There is a disclaimer though. These two functions are not bulletproof. For example, I hard-coded 21 ticks in the x-axis, which is kind of funny and only work in this demonstration. Now let's use these functions to help us understand the absolute function. The label is coded in LaTeX. You can see the input array show up as x-axis and output result on the y-axis. The bar plot helps explain the one-to-one -one relationship between the input elements and the output elements because the absolute function turns the negative value into positive value and have the non-negative value as the original, the whole plot looks like a big V letter. Now let's move on to another function, square root. It spells the same as the one in Python's math package. Like the absolute function, it will take any array as the input and apply a square root on the array in element by element fraction. This time we go directly to plot the function. Square root won't handle negative values. We do absolute first and then apply square root. See how those functions work from inside out. Think about it in the element level. Although this function take array as input, they operate element-wise on the array, so that we can just look at each element independently. From the chart, we can see that relationship. Take minus 4.0 for example. The absolute value of minus 4.0 is 4.0. And then the square root of 4.0 is 2.0, which we can match it to the y-axis. Exponential function is not a function we use very often in daily life, but it is one of the most important functions in data science. From logistic regression to activation functions in neural network. Like square root, you can find Python's native version of exponential function in a math package. But this one in NumPy operates element-wise on ND array. We can see that from the plot. Logarithm function is another important function in data science, but less familiar in daily life. In fact, it is so important, there are different forms of the logarithm function in NumPy, which use irrational number e, 10, or 2 as base. And because logarithm will overflow near 0, 0.0, and usually the most interesting part of logarithm is from 1 to infinity, NumPy also provides a log 1p function for your convenience. Let's look at it in real. First, let's plot the normal logarithm function. To avoid giving negative value which logarithm function doesn't support, I apply absolute function on the array first. 
you can see there is a deep dive between minus 1.0 and positive 1.0 and I deliberately missed the point 0.0, .0. otherwise it will fall even further and cause exception in Python. Now let's put the normal logarithm function and the log 1p function together and see what's the difference. From the plot, log 1p doesn't dive under 0. And the larger the input is, the closer they are to each other. Again, please think about the element-wise operations. The last two universal functions I want to talk about here are sine and cosine. We can plot the sine function against the array A and see the repeating wave shape in the chart. And then do the same thing to cosine. They have the same shapes and cycle. Let's put them together and see the difference. We're going to wrap up our course on universal function here. But there are more to know about ufunk in NumPy and I would like to encourage you to do more reading yourself on SciPy's website. Today we talk about the universal functions in NumPy. The most important concept here is also element-wise operations, similar to what we've learned in the last unit. We went through some typical functions in NumPy. Basic operations and ufunks are very important in NumPy. Please practice more with the element-wise mindset. Hope you found this video helpful. If you want to learn NumPy and other data science related topics with me, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time.